How are you? Uh, we are back again on this segment of Pure Physics. It's uh, your teacher, Mr. Chanda. So today we are going to look at uh, cathode ray oscilloscope. Last time we looked at um, the way electrons can be actually uh, produced when we hit a metal which has the ability to have the particles or electrons that gain a lot of kinetic energy and therefore cause them to escape the surface of that metal. And we discussed to say if this beam of electrons is able to flow from one end of the, the tube, which is a vacuum, to the other end of the tube, which is a vacuum, having to uh, charge the particles or filaments where we have the cathode and the anode on the other side, if this happens, we are going to call those electrons as uh, a cathode ray or cathode rays. So now, we discuss to say, in our next segment or lesson, we are going to learn or we are going to look at a cathode ray oscilloscope. So now the rays that should be emitted or the rays that are usually emitted when we heat a metal at higher temperatures, they produce a beam of electrons which we call cathode rays. So those rays that are usually produced, they are used in an instrument or in different instruments that are electronic. So these uh, electronic instruments that are used, that uses uh, this beam of electrons or cathode rays, we have, for example, a television set, we have a computer monitor, we have also some other instruments that are electronic as well. Now, today we are going to look at uh, a cathode ray oscilloscope. So here with me is a diagram, a simple diagram of a cathode ray oscilloscope which has different parts that are labeled. Okay, so from the beginning, we have this part here which is labeled C, we have the other part which is labeled G, and A1 plus A2. We have Y and Y at the bottom, and we have another X there plus another X. At the far end here, we have the other part of the cathode ray oscilloscope, which is abbreviated as C, RO, we have the, uh, the last part here which is labeled S. So now, these parts that we have here on this diagram of a cathode ray oscilloscope, they have their own functions for them to make this whole cathode ray oscilloscope to function as it should function according to the basic electronics in physics. So, last time we looked at uh, the behavior of different types of metals, for example, tungsten and barium, which are able to emit electrons if at all they are heated to a higher temperature. So one of the metals that has been used here, we have C. The part which is labeled C is our cathode in this case, which is a negatively charged filament. And we have A and A here, A1 and A2, they are standing for anode 1 and anode 2, which are the filaments that are charged or maintained to be positively charged in respect to the cathode filament. And we have the Y and the X. These are usually the simply plates which are able to carry out the function of deflection. So, looking at this whole diagram that we have here, the diagram is divided into two parts. A cathode ray oscilloscope has two parts. We have number one, uh, an electron gun, and number two, we have the deflection system. What makes up an electron gun? So an electron gun is made up of uh, a filament, a heating filament, which is surrounded or covered by a C, which is a cathode in this case, negatively charged. The one that when heated to a higher temperature is able to produce or emit a beam of electrons. And on the other side here we have A1 and A2. The A1 and A2, as we stated earlier, they are simply the anodes, which are able to attract the emitted electrons from here and allow them to flow through there. And we have this, which is the second part of the cathode ray oscilloscope. So the second part of the cathode ray oscilloscope is made up of the deflecting plates, where we have the Y plates and also the X plates. And at the far end here, we also have the screen, which is a fluorescent screen. 
the behavior of the fluorescent screen is that when it is stricken by a beam or with a beam of electrons, it glows or it produces light. So, taking you back a bit uh, to the function or the way this uh, cathode ray oscilloscope works, we start with the filament where we have the heating system. So, the filament is here to provide heat which enables this C or the cathode to be heated. And when it is heated at higher temperature, the C, which is a metal, tungsten, is able to have the particles in it, specifically the electrons that are going to gain enough kinetic energy to make them escape the surface of this tungsten metal. And if the electrons are emitted, what is going to happen? We know to say electrons have an electric charge which is negative. And if the anode is positively charged, we expect these opposite charges to be able to attract each other. So now, since we know to say positive uh, particles are unable to move, what do they do? They attract those that are able to flow, which are the electrons. So when electrons are emitted by a cathode after being heated, they are attracted by these two anodes which have this chosen shape. Before we go further, the shape of the anodes that we have here, anode 1 and anode 2, they are chosen the way they are in order to be able to produce at least a thin beam of electrons. So when this happens, the electrons now are accelerated. In other words, they are caused to travel at a higher speed. When this happens, what is going to happen is that they are going to be directed towards the plates. These two plates that we have here, we have the Y plates, which are considered to be the vertical Y plates. Why are they called that? Because they are able to deflect a beam of electrons uh, vertically. So after this vertical deflection, we have the next uh, plate, which we have where we have the X uh, horizontal X plates. The function of the horizontal X plates is to make sure that they are able to accelerate further uh, the, the beam of electrons that has been deflected vertically. The X plates now will also deflect a beam of those electrons horizontally towards the screen which is here. Now, we know to say the nature of a fluorescent material is that it glows when it is stricken by a beam of electrons. So this beam of electrons will come and strike the surface of a mirror, which I mean of a screen, which is coated with a fluorescent material. So if it is coated with that material, we expect it to glow and produce light when uh, it is stricken by a beam of electrons. So this is what causes the monitors, the screens, even when they are not connected to the other device, they are able to produce, for example, those for the computer monitors. They are able to produce light. They grow, I mean they glow because they are, uh, they are stricken by a beam of electrons, which is produced by the cathode, accelerated by the two anodes, deflected by two different uh, plates where we have the Y and the X uh, plates. So, uh, on this note, we end our lesson today. Next time we meet, we are going to continue and look at the uh, X-ray tube. Thank you very much.